it's just been re-released it's hitting the shops now let's have a look at airfixers 1 to 48 scale Wesleyan Lynx And welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Yes, Airfix have re released their Westland Lynx from 2012. So let's talk about that before we go any further with anything else. So, one way or another, there's been quite a lot of chat recently about uh, model companies re releasing old kits uh, and not necessarily being upfront and honest about it. Uh, case in point was the uh, recent TACOM 1700 ship releases. Um, and uh, there's lots of companies that re-release kits and some of them are honest about it um, but don't necessarily overtly tell you and some of them sort of hide it and we're not really going to get into the politics of, of who does what but lots of companies do it, Ravel do it, Tamiya do it, Italeri do it um, lots and lots of big names do it and Airfix do it the one thing I like about Airfix in recent years is they have tried to make it explicit, which is not something they used to do under previous management a few years ago, but they now make it explicit. They have a classic kicks range and then they have the red box range. And if it's a red box, it's either a new or fairly new tooling. And clearly Airfix are classing 2012 as a fairly new tool. Now, as you as a consumer, if you're um, not buying online and not got access to scale mates, how do you know whether the kit is a re-release if you stood in a shop or stood at a show? Well, let me show you what to look for and where. If you look on the side of an Airfix box, where you get the Hornby Hobbies address, you'll also have a little section of text here. It tells you, you um, that you've got cartograph decals um, and then you've got... Um, some information about authorised uh, representatives in the European Union and then here where it says Hornby Hobbies Limited it will tell you model design and tooling copyright 2012 that's how you know how old the tooling is decal scheme and pack design 2022 that's how you know it's an older kit reissued it then tells you which country it was manufactured in and that's important, I'll tell you why in a second. It'll say here, all rights reserved, made in India. So there is two manufacturing sites for it, for uh, Airfix, India and the UK. Some people will tell you China as well, but that's not true. The tooling for the moulds is made in China. Now, if you're buying something made in India, you're, my understanding is you're more likely to get the softer plastic, although Airfix are working on their plastic. If it's made in the UK, it's more likely to be harder plastic. That's my understanding. So the new 124 scale Spitfire that's coming out at some point this year is being made in the UK. Airfix have already told us that. So that's the information you're looking for and that's where to find it. Airfix are being open and upfront. What is going to be interesting to see is at what point something drops out of being new tool and becomes a classic kit. So the classic kits at the moment are 50, 60 years old. This is not 20 years old, it's not 10 years old. So I can understand them saying it's a relatively new tool. I, it, it's hard to know and it'll be interesting to see. Well, what Airfix generally do is they they put something out um, and let it run for one or two years, depending on how popular it is, um, and then they will do a re-release with some more different decals, so you've got some different options, and let that run for one or two years, and then it'll drop off, and they'll rest it for two or three years, and then they'll come up with some new decals, maybe a new box design, and bring it back out. Uh, and revitalize it. If you see on Scalemates it says um, new parts, that usually means different ordnance. 
very rarely means something substantial to the kit. So that's a little bit of a background of what to look for and what you're getting when you buy an Airfix kit. Well, let's get on with this. So this is just hitting the shops as I speak. Um, people should be who pre-ordered it should be receiving it um, around about now. I pre-ordered it as people saw if you watched the video of me doing the new catalogue shop um, in January. I, I ordered it the first day it was uh, out on the catalogue for pre-order. So I'm amongst one of the first to get it hopefully. So we have a standard red box format. We've got um, three images there which tells us we've got three different decal options. Uh, three paint variants, so that's nice to see. Got some lovely artwork of the um, aircraft in Royal Navy service um, skimming across the uh, ocean. It seems to be saying that we've got three different options, um, as in uh, different variants, so that'll be interesting to see as we go through it. The ends are the standard Airfix ends, which box ends, which tell us the same as the top. And then if we turn around here, we'll have a little bit of history uh, telling us that it entered service in 1977. Then we get our three different options, A, B and C. So we've got Naval Air Squ Squadron, HMS Portland, Royal Navy, Royal Navy Air Station, Yeovilton, Somerset, England 2017. Then we've got um, Graf Zeppelin, Germany 2018 and Dutch Navy um, Air Squadron 2013. So we've got Lots and lots of variants there, so that's really nice. Nice to see that we've got different nations being covered as well. Um, we've got our list of paints there, so quite a few for what looks like not too many colours from the, from the outside, but I'm guessing that's pilots, interiors and bits and pieces. And four flying hours because it's a skill level four. So what that's telling us is straight out of the box, it's a quite advanced build. So that should be fun. Right, I need to break the tape on this because I've literally got it out of its uh, cardboard box. It's just been delivered and I have not looked inside yet. So we are going to get a genuine first impression because I have never seen this kit before. Now, I tell a small, small fib there. I did watch the Airfix official unboxing, um, which showed you the sprues and, and not much else. So. Let's see what we get in the box. So, um, as expected, it's the normal Airfix style of everything in one bag. I can see another clear bag in there, which will no doubt have our clear parts in. Then we have our um, instructions and our decal sheet and separate paint and stencil sheets and what I will say is there is quite a bit of space in that box for this to uh, get damaged I think a slightly smaller box so that didn't move around would have been in order anyway we'll get a view in a moment whether this has been damaged or not so it might be worth you putting some newspaper or something in and padding the box if um, you're putting this in your stash rather than building it straight away. Our instruction manual is the standard Airfix A4 portrait stapled um, and it comes with the same information as always at the front with a bit of history, specification, three different languages on the front page. Then it has um, the four best results, um, surfaces to be painted need to be cleaned. Then as we open up we have um, more languages uh, with the um, background information and then we've got assembly instructions in multiple languages more languages than were given for the history to be honest um, and it basically tells you to study the the drawings and practice assembly before gluing and that sort of stuff all good stuff then we have our assembly icon instructions fill airfix kits before this will all be familiar to you the icons haven't changed for quite some time now if you've not built an airfix kit before then you're in for a treat because airfix instructions are amongst some of the very best in the market in my opinion right then we have something that I am not familiar with so let's have a look what this is 
counter piracy ABC air rescue ABC anti-surface warfare A right okay so depending on what paint scheme you're going with you need to um, choose uh, which option you're going with so option A um, you can do any of these formats whereas options B and C you can only do those two formats and you won't be carrying all the ordnance so that's your decision right at the start so that's cool and we start off in um, step one with different options depending on which what decision you've made there so that's that's nice that they're making you make that decision um, because right from the off you've got to be thinking about what you want to drill out depending on the arrangements inside. So as you can see we're drilling location holes for winch equipment, two different types of seat, electrical equipment and some, uh, some more seats there. Then in step two we're assembling those components so we can see here we're building the seat that you're going to use on the B or C version of the helicopter. So that all makes sense. It tells you with a question mark that you've got an option of that seat or that seat. Um, and then it does the same there. A, B and C, you've got an option of that seat or that seat. And, and so on, it carries on. So... Some careful study of the instructions is required to make sure you're clear in your mind what option you want to do and how that's going to look like. As always, I recommend going through the entirety of the instructions and getting familiar with them before you actually make your decision on which version you want. Because you may particularly like the look of a certain inside arrangement and that might lead you to which one you want to do. So it's good to go through the instructions and get a clear view. So we can see why this is a skill level four right from the off. There's lots and lots of decisions being made. There's some really small parts going in. We've had to do some drilling. We've had to do some complex building already. We're only at step nine. So different seat arrangements. Again, an option. Then we've got one or two sticks again an option then we've got different decals again an option telling you which ones very clear a or b and c so really interesting lots and lots of decals going on there so the inside of your cockpit should look really plush when done one thing airfix now do really well is little picture in picture boxes which give you side views of geometry and positioning so you make sure that you get the angles right you can see here we've got 90 degrees here for this bulkhead not quite it doesn't actually tell you the degrees there but it telling you that it should lean slightly we're assembling electrical equipment and putting it in then we've got seats going in different seats being built up um, that we saw right at the decision process right at the start and then they're going in as different options different orientations loads and loads and loads of things you can mess around with in this it's really nice actually step 20 and we're putting the internal um, roof in and then 21 we're putting the sides in so some of this at the back end is going to be difficult to see uh, through your open doors even more so if the doors are closed but anything you do glimpse will be really authentic. So that's what we're after. I think that's great. Step 22, that gets busy with the drills again. Airfix always tell you the diameter of the drills that you need. So that's really good. Um, and then it's telling you to have a look at page 22. Got something to do with the rotors being folded. Um, so quite what that is, I don't know. Um, and then you're doing more of the same here. You need to really study it to understand what it is you're doing. But again, it is clearly telling you which variant has which. Step 24, looks like we're putting some glazing in at that point. Could be a blanked panel, not sure. 
Um, and then you've got options depending on what your munitions are going to be, so more hole drilling. Then we've got the, the main two um, exterior halves. We're adding some bits onto that before we put that interior piece in. So we've put plenty of detail into that before we even get the two halves together, which we're doing step 29. More drilling, more options, uh, and then we're starting to build up in sections the outside fuselage of the helicopter. Uh, looks like the exhaust system there. So it's nice that we've got some internal pipe work. That should look really good. More exterior parts being built. A lot more drilling. Careful not to make any mistakes. If it was me, I'd go through the instructions once you've made the decision and cross out the ones that you don't want so it's clear which ones you're going to do. Uh, then we're building up the nose cone. Again, lots of different options depending on what role you're going for. We've got different options for the sliding door there. So not quite clear what those options would lead to. But Then we're trimming the corner of the door. That's interesting. I guess that's to fit around that, is it? That's interesting. Um, and then we're building the door on the other side and then we're doing exactly the same there. So it's telling you to cut a bit off, but it's not telling you how much. We could do with a, a length and a depth, really. So I guess it's to fit on the on this um, bit that juts out with the wheel in and the undercarriage. So a little bit of looking at that. It might be obvious when we see the plastic part. It could be. We're now at step 54 and we're starting to build up the tail. Again, it's referencing whether you're having the rotors folded or open. At 148, the rotors open is gonna take up quite a bit of space, so bear that in mind before you make your decision. Where am I gonna put this when I'm done? So we build up the tail, again, plenty of options. Then we're building up the uh, landing gear by the looks of it. Again, options with geometry, rotated, not rotated. Um, looks like we've got weighted tyres as well, so that is interesting. Um, that might limit you into whether you want to have it in flight or not, although I haven't seen them give you an option for putting it on a stand, so maybe not designed for an in-flight option. More options here when we get to um, step 61 and 62 which has got something to do with lifting hooks or something. Um, then we've got some uh, more exterior parts going on around the wheel area. Um, and it looks like we've got separate hubs and tyres, so that'll make that nice and easy to paint. So that's another lovely feature. Um, and then we've got some small detail parts going on. Lots going on with this kit, lots and lots of parts. Step 68, and we continue with adding lots of little small details. Couldn't tell you what any of them are. I can just tell you that there's lots of them. We've also got lots of options depending on what you're doing, of course. So all of these are different options. Then we're building up some ordnance and what looks like some form of a step or, or something. Oh, it's the mount for the ordnance, I beg your pardon, which goes on the side there. Step 81, we're carrying on um, what we were doing, but on the other side of the aircraft. And then we're building up um, some form of gun. You can see the ammunition uh, pack going in there. Seems to be on a little swivel mount. Um, and, and then it's being put in there. So it doesn't say it's an option but I'm assuming that it is. I um, need to have a look at that. Then we've got um, a winch. That's the mount for it and the winch, um, which seems to have, seems to be empty. I'm not sure if that's right. We'll have to have a look at the part, I guess. Um, and then as we travel over here, we're installing the winch. It goes on the inside there. So that swings out if required. It'd be interesting to see if that um, will swing out or whether we're going to end up gluing it in place. Then at step 98, we're putting the um, first clear parts in, 
with the windscreens there and the side panel. You can see that some of the side panel um, is actually bodywork, so there's some painting to be done. It actually looks like some careful painting might need to be done with that. Uh, then we've got wipers. Um, uh, it be interesting to see how nicely moulded they are. Um, and then what looks like radio antennas or something. Um, and then 12E. That's interesting. Okay, I think they might be clear parts by the look of them. Can you see the window through it? I think that's clear parts. I think probably that is mesh or something, um, and they've decided to show it as a clear part. So I'd be interested to see that. Then, as we flip over, we start on the rotors, and then there's um, some conversation about whether you want to have the rotors uh, open or closed, and which step to go to, depending on how you want to do that, in several different languages. Um, so uh, even the base of the rotors is quite quite busy. We've got all sorts of bolt detail and stuff there that has been put onto these individual parts. So it should look the part. Then we've got these separate bits going on, so it should it should look nice, yeah. And then even more bits going on. And then we do exactly the same, but they'll be in different positions because the rotors are swung back. Um, now they should lock into place as well um, on the actual aircraft. I remember doing the photo etch in 1350. Um, then we've got some tail assembly, um, uh, mounting the propeller at the back there. Um, that's another E, so I think that's another clear part. Then we, yeah, building up more of the tail. That says B and C, and that says A, so there must be some subtle differences, but I'm not sure I can recognise what they are at this point. Um, then we've got an option here, and I'm guessing that's to do with the fold in the tail, because that will swing back when stowed away. Um, so putting the rotor on and there we have our little stays for the rotor which just locks the blades in place when it's folded back so it's nice that they're included that's good then uh, yeah we're putting them on the other side um, then we've got parts specific for closed rotor ah so that we can have the tail hinged uh, folded back tucks just under there and we have an image of that there and an image with the full rotor. Very nice. 141 steps, um, thereabouts, depending on how you're displaying your model. That is a very involved build, I think. So we get three different um, paint sheets. I've got to say, I quite like these as wall decorations. I think that makes quite a nice little display piece. So what usually happens is you get the paint um, chart and then you get a separate sort of stencils um, chart but what they've done here is each paint chart on the back has its own stencil data we've got three different languages obviously um, on the on the paint options so what they're actually doing is giving us the the decal options on each page so it does mean because you've got decals on the paint scheme as well so that's what these red boxes are here that you've got decals on both sides. So generally how I work is I put these, what I call the national markings, the main markings on first and then work through all the little state stencils in and around it. Um, and as you can see, shy with the stencils, there is plenty. In fact, um, a is the paint scheme with the most because we've got the ordnance in there. And just look at how many decals they've put on one bit of ordnance. Um, and we've got more ordnance there. And, you know, there's, there's decals on all sorts of things. Two decals on the winch. These are the uh, rotor blades decals on both sides. So we've got like a, a silver edge and then these little black marks and some wording. We've even got decals on the the root of the rotor, the center spinner, and we've got decals for the uh, tail um, rotor as well. There is absolutely stencils 
everywhere. Now, when it actually comes to the paint scheme, um, this is for me is probably the dullest of the paint schemes, um, the, the medium sea grey. Um, but it's, a, it, I suppose, from a Royal Navy point of view, it's the appropriate colour. Um, you do get a little bit of colour on the um, uh, rotors, but then we've got some really lovely colourful decals to break it up. So, um, I, although it's perhaps the, the least attractive of the paint schemes, it's the most interesting of the aircraft because you've got the ordnance, you've got this camera um, array on the front. So it's the one that looks most attractive technically. Um, if we go to this one, which is the Danish Navy one. Now, interestingly, I've only ever built a Lynx before in 172 scale. It was the Matchbox one, and that was the colour it was painted in, in the um, Midnight Blue. And that's a lovely colour. I'd like to have the Royal Navy helicopter in that colour. That would be my perfect world. Um, but, yeah, that's, um, that's a really nice scheme, and there's some nice attractive decals to it as well. Um, not quite as many um, main decals. And then as we spin over, you can see there's not quite as many um, stencils either, but there's still plenty of them. There is still plenty of them. Um, but I think that's a nice idea, them uh, putting them on one page. And then if we go to our last paint scheme, which is the German one, you get that... Uh, blue gray scheme with the uh, german marine markings i think um yeah they're they're all good paint schemes that's the problem they're all good paint schemes um that probably is the dullest in terms of overall look and you've got um the most simple of the aircraft options so for me as much as i like it i'm probably going to go with the royal navy and Still plenty of stencils on that, but not as many as the Royal Navy version. So the decals themselves are cartograph. We saw that stated on the box. Um, that is Airfix's usual uh, brand. And I think it's uh, uh, well known that cartograph are the industry leader when it comes to decals. So Airfix decals are always extremely high quality Um great decals and uh, what we've got is their usual format we've got a box here which separates the national markings from the common which is this sort of l shape here so everything here will be on all versions then we have the royal navy box in the top left there the german box in the top right the uh, danish one here in the bottom left and then this one in the middle is common to both of those types schemes b and c in addition to those so um you you it looks almost like you're getting more decals on on there but um i you've not got the ordinance so i'm not quite sure but anyway um there is one way or another you're certainly going to get lots of practice at putting your decals on with this kit because there is tons of them and of all of them i mean there's nothing there that i think will cause you a major issue with the possible exception, they could be, they'll need a little bit of care, but there's no carrier film in the middle. But that little sign there, you see that? That is attached to that. So you could have some real issues with that if you're not careful. But I think these that go on the road, you may consider painting them on instead. Maybe. Maybe. Right, first sprue out of the box is sprue A, and it's in Airfix's usual recognisable blue-grey plastic. Now, going back to what I'd said about country of manufacture and soft and hard plastics, I've got to say, this is really hard plastic. Um, so the last few um, new release kits that I've had from Airfix have all been in this harder plastic, um, and I think we've personally possibly seen the last of the softer plastics and that's really good news Now the first thing that strikes me because we've got the two main uh, fuselage halves there 
Um, uh, we've got the bottom of the body um, to go there. We've got one of the floor pan options, um, the swing tail, um, and some interior bits. And the thing that strikes me is the level of detail is absolutely stunning. Look at that. That's the underside. And I don't know if you can, you can get, but the detail is absolutely lovely. Look at that. Look at that. Lots and lots of, I can feel them raised rivets. It's really, really nice. Lots of different size fasteners. There's nothing standard about it. That is a thing of beauty, definitely. Um, and that carries on into the sides here. We can see there's some lovely detail on the surface of this. All sorts of different fasteners and stuff. Um, is it soft molded? Maybe a little bit, but I think the hard plastic somehow has sharpened it up. Um, I'm not sure that that makes sense, but that, that's how it feels. Um, there's some really nice detail though. I mean, look at that that is stunning um, then we've got this is the nose cone there and again great level of detail and look at the texturing this is the uh, ceiling like the padded ceiling and you can look at that you can see all the texturing there the sag which is all how it would be sidewall pieces there are absolutely the same there's some lovely uh, textured effect in there some lovely texturing in there um, and it does look sort of different but sort of the same and you don't want it to be uniform really and if we flip it over the one part that has got some uh, detail um, it's got all the um, uh, harnesses already molded in but again lots of lovely I to have a short shot here but it's affecting the sprue only and not the part as far as I can see part looks fine but it's wiggling around so, yeah, that is really nice. Really, really nice. Sprue B, we've got lots of little parts on Sprue B and our ordnance. Um, and uh, bits of the landing gear, the rotor, um, the camera box, um, all sorts of tiny little bits there. Again, everything nice and crisp. Some quite delicate parts, actually. And look at the little D-rings there, they're nicely done. We flick it over, and that's clearly wheel hubs there. Look at the detail on the camera, you can see. Let me get that in shot for you. Look at that. That's really nice. I was expecting this to be a bit softly moulded. And it really isn't. It's um, yeah, I I'm quite impressed with this. Sprue C. Um, we've got some big parts on here. We've got a different door. We've got a different floor pan, and we've got the fixed tail option, um, and then some smaller parts. Um, seats all have moulded in strapping and they are a little soft moulded that to be honest um, but everything else seems to be nice and crisp hinge there I can feel the texture under my finger really nice little bit of flash once again but nothing major nothing wrong with that at all Now look at all the textured detail on the, on the tail. Isn't that lovely? Now we've got some fine parts there, handrails or whatever. 
nothing much particularly. We've got the back of the seat there with a gas bottle on. Um, yeah, I think that looks spot on. Sprue D is our largest single sprue in the box. Um, and that's got the rotor blades on. Um, we've got various seat parts. We've got the rotor blade um, locking rods there. Um, we've got the uh, tail propeller. Um, more seat parts. That's that frame for just behind the cockpit there, which does have some sink in. You can just see. It's quite a thick bit of plastic, so a little bit of filling needed to sort that, Mr. Surfacer, to the rescue, I would think. Lots of small little parts again. Um, yeah, parts for the rotor and, and bits and pieces for the outside of the fuselage. That's that in, uh, exhaust pipes. Uh, and it's noticeable on the rotors that they are quite thin. I can't see any sink on them, they're nice and crisp. Clean up of them shouldn't be a problem. There's some nice texturing there on the seats. All looks really quite nice and natural. Some very fine moulding going on there, as good as anybody's. Backs of the seats there, we've got some lovely detail on there, it will look nice picked out in different colours. So we flick it over, we can see uh, the engine blades, they're nice and sharp, more seat texture, um, the belts, there doesn't appear to be any pilots, no figures for this, so you'd be going aftermarket for figures. So. So I would like to say this is sprue E, following the logic that we've done A through to D, uh, but this doesn't have a, a, a name on it, so, so that's what we'll call it. It's the last of our blue-grey plastic ones, and what we've got on here is more ordnance parts, the racks for them, the racks for them, the tail parts, uh, a number of small parts, um, including the uh, windscreen wipers there, um, and then we've got the tyres as well, um, which got a bit, of, a bit of a seam to get rid of, but otherwise they're okay. And we've got the separate hubs for them, which makes painting nice and easy. Um, and they're already weighted flats for, for ground landing, so you'll have to position them carefully. We've got some of the interior little boxes. Yeah, I wonder if this is the extra parts that came out just after after release. There was a little flurry of releases when this came out in, in 2012. Uh, there's no issues with any of these parts. Absolutely lovely. So finally we have clear parts and that is sprue E. So the other one must have been sprue F. There you go. Um, it's really nice actually. You've got um, the, the glass inset into the metal frame so some careful painted needing there but it will make some of the um, glazing process easier. We've got windows there that go into the doors um, and then we've got some smaller ones. That one's just come away from the sprue a little bit. Um, and then we've got the windscreen. And the, the top window has a bit of distortion in. The front window, I'm glad to say, doesn't because that's the main one you're going to look through. Um, if we look at the side ones there, they're pretty good as well. Yeah, no real issues. I, 
somehow they don't quite look as clear as some I've seen and actually yeah I have a little scratch on mine Let's see if we can get that to show up just just there there's a little scratch you see that so that's a little disappointing um, but we'll probably be able to get rid of that just by dipping it in the gloss varnish um, and then we've got so this part here I saw in the instructions is almost one of the last parts to go on I hadn't appreciated it was going to be a, a clear part or some part of it should be clear so that's interesting and then we've got clearly some camera lenses and lights and bits and pieces so a fair few clear parts all in all it actually looks clearer on camera than when I'm looking at it not through the camera so what you're seeing actually looks slightly clearer for me they look just a little bit fuzzy somehow for want of a much better way of describing it but I always dip in a gloss varnish and that really makes them sing so there we have it Airfixers 2022 re-release of their 2012 tooling of the 1 to 48 scale Westland Lynx what are my first impressions well I've not seen this kit before and I'd say it's a cracking little kit I didn't see any issues in that whatsoever there was one part with sinking two parts with the tiniest bit of flash on really crisp molding nice hard plastic lots and lots of detail quite a complex build definitely a builder's model um, uh, yeah really really nice kit I'm impressed Airfix have made this really really difficult for everyone because they've included three lovely paint schemes and I would really like to do all of those um, as I said when we were going through the video I like this option that you see here with the ordinance and the camera and and that draws me into what is actually probably the blander of the three um, paint choices both of those look stunning as well and I think it's nice that we've got some options for different countries so you're sort of almost thinking I've got to buy another two kits at this point I think it's a really nice kit um, I'm looking forward to building this actually um, I have not built a helicopter in ages which is why I bought this when I saw it I thought you know what not bought a helicopter for ages and I don't think I've ever done one in 148 it's always been 172 so uh, the last one I did was the old Airfix Sea King um, in 172 and that came out quite nice but it had some fit issues and and um, some frustrations this looks like it will be a lot of fun and I am looking forward to getting that on my bench so if you're in the market or were interested to see what Airfix were chucking out with their 148 Westland you now know what's in the box I hope that was useful take care everyone you enjoy your modeling and I will see you very soon.